Elon Musk's lawsuit with Twitter has begun. Lawyers from both sides have started preparing their cases, and it's going to be something to remember. As Elon Musk explained, he played a great chess game and has checkmated the Twitter board. As a result, this move affected greatly the social media platform. Twitter shares have plummeted and the company tries to find the best solutions in a tough situation, but because of a current ongoing lawsuit, it only damages the company's reputation. At the same time, as you know, the SEC has interfered with Elon Musk already and they don't have the best relationship at all, which makes this upcoming trial even worse. With that, as Elon's lawyer explained, the Twitter board breached various agreements that they had with Elon, and that's how Musk is trying to avoid paying a $1 billion penalty. And even though the Twitter board has sued Musk, Elon collected a lot of unfair practices that he learned and is going to reveal them to the public. Let's explain what is going on now. As you know, problems started when Musk requested account information from Twitter so he could establish what percentage of its users were actually spam or bot accounts, and Twitter began acting evasive about the information, insisting it was private and not for Musk's hands. After that, the Tesla CEO filed about material breaches of different provisions, which includes its reluctance to relinquish the number of false and bot accounts on its platform. As the letter reads, Twitter has not provided information that Mr. Musk has requested for nearly two months, notwithstanding his repeated, detailed clarifications intended to simplify Twitter's identification, collection and disclosure of the most relevant information sought in Mr. Musk's original requests. According to the filing, Musk's requests were ignored and rejected for unjustifiable reasons, as well as Twitter occasionally claiming to have been in compliance, whilst giving him useless information. At some point during all of these tense exchanges, Musk attempted to test the number of fake accounts himself by, in his own words, doing a random sample of 100 followers of at Twitter. When asked about the number in the sample by a follower, Musk replied, I picked 100 as a simple size number because that is what Twitter uses to calculate less than 5% fake, spam, duplicate. This would appear to be the start of Twitter getting their legal team to clap back to Musk. As a few days later, Musk would tweet, Twitter legal just called to complain that I violated their NDA by revealing the bot check sample size is 100, adding soon after that he had yet to see any analysis that has fake, spam, duplicates at less than 5%. The assumption that Musk holds is that the specific information was omitted in order to make Twitter look like a more desirable purchase and thus trick him into thinking he was getting a better deal than he was actually getting. This, of course, is disputed by Twitter, as Parag Agrawal laid out how they came to their estimates of bot accounts in the long Twitter thread and still stands by it. According to Agrawal, Twitter tests the number of bot accounts every quarter and have been doing this for many years. He claims they do this by basing the estimate on multiple human reviews in replicate of thousands of accounts that are sampled at random consistently over time. He goes on to say that this review takes both public and private information to complete, aka it needs IP addresses, phone numbers, geolocations and other extremely personal data to fully verify someone's account. The information Musk was looking for simply couldn't be shared. Musk seemed unimpressed with this answer, responding with the poop emoji and a rebuttal that advertisers on Twitter would likely be given this information before deciding to advertise on Twitter. Alongside this accusation of there being more than 5% spam accounts on Twitter, Musk also alleged that Twitter had failed to continue its normal business, which is a breach of their purchase contract, evidencing this with how it had fired two high-ranking employees and announcing that it was laying off nearly a third of its talent acquisition team. Brett Taylor, the Twitter board chair, tweeted a public response that Twitter intends to turn litigious in order to get this transaction closed. The tweet reads, the Twitter board is committed to closing the transaction on the price and terms agreed upon with Mr. Musk and plans to pursue legal action to enforce the merger agreement. We are confident we will prevail in the Delaware Court of Chancery. Now, we can expect it will turn even more litigious, more lawyers and for this can go to court. After all, according to what Musk's lawyers wrote to Twitter that Musk was clearly entitled to the requested data to enable him to prepare for transitioning Twitter's business to his ownership and facilitate his transaction financing, which would equate to a breach of contract which Musk could sue over. Twitter, on the other hand, appears to hold firm that they are compliant with both the purchase contract and data privacy laws, which was their initial objection to giving Musk the information he requested. A Columbia University law professor, Eric Talley, theorizes that Twitter most likely believes that this would be able to force Musk to follow through with the purchase via the courts under a clause known as the Specific Performance Clause. Whether Twitter or Musk may win is purely up to speculation at this time, but it is almost certain that neither Twitter nor Musk are likely to budge on their positions, and so we can expect a judge to have to be the one to decide. 
But of the two of them, Twitter may be the one more desperate to win in the courts, because of the two of them, Twitter seems to have been the most beaten up by the whole deal, according to an anonymous Twitter employee. To quote, I guess it feels like we won, but it feels like the end of the movie, where the characters are bloodied and bedraggled, with a Michael Bay explosion behind them. We could see this was coming, but in the meantime, he's effing destroyed the company. The hit which Twitter has taken could show in their stock as well. Having dropped from $54.20 per share when Musk first announced his part in the deal, to a dismal $36.81 per share. That would mean that should Musk be forced to pay for the transaction, he would have to pay $14 billion, more than the company is currently worth. In fact, some have wondered if perhaps this drop in value might be the real reason that Musk has decided to walk away.